Okay, hi guys. Um, today, Mark joins me to talk about his experiences of studying at the UK University, and in particular, studying a computer science games degree. So, hi, Mark. Hi, Amos. Thanks for having me. Yep, no worries. How are you doing? I'm doing good, thanks. I'm enjoying uh, a little bit of free time now that it's over with, but yeah. Yeah, good it's stuff. Hard to find a job now. <laughs> <laughs> so, please tell us uh, a bit about your course that you're studying on, a bit about your background and um, various things that you did while university. And you're now a graduate, so you can talk about all this stuff. Yeah, yeah, exciting stuff. So, uh, yeah, I was studying computer science games. So, studying computer science games, we focus mainly on computer game development, uh, such things as obviously like game programming, game design. Uh, agile methodology, so understanding the best practices of how to uh, uh, go about developing a game over long periods of time. Uh, we also focus on such things like uh, UML diagrams, like the the higher level understandings of how a program will work. Uh, we do a little bit of AI. Um, so the jobs that kind of like uh, like I will go for will be someone who's obviously clearly somewhere in the games industry. Mm -hmm. uh, they can involve like programming, designer, uh, producer in some sense, because they need a technical background in some cases. Um, yeah, there's pretty much a lot of variety of roles in the games industry. Um, my background uh, for this, I was actually, I'm a mature student. Uh, my background mainly involves either catering or plastering or being an XOU student uh, studying English or psychology. So I've got a, bit of a, a large psychology background. But yeah, that's pretty much... Uh, my background anyway. <laughs> so it's kind of a big switch from what you were doing before to computer science. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. It's, uh, it, was a, it was a big shift because, um, yeah, I wanted to learn a bit about myself, a little bit more the people around me. So I studied psychology for about four years and then, um, but it wasn't kind of what I wanted to do in the long run. It was always like game development was always like my dream as a child. And I was like, well, why not go for it? And uh, obviously computer science is one of the major ways of doing that because obviously games is a very technical area and uh yeah just pretty much went on from there I was like you know enrolled to brighton and here i am now so <laughs> how did you find the switch easy difficult um programming was difficult because i had to um go back into academic mode up more full time whereas ou it was um like you, you know you do it while you work and uh, it's a little bit less strict and really worrying about one module maybe two whereas oh. at full-time university you're worrying about five or six modules at one time and uh yeah it was and, and it's learning quite quickly especially in the first year but uh no it was it was hard work but it was uh, it was good fun getting back into it and yeah <laughs> cool stuff uh but what do you like about studying at the university though is there anything that you do like uh in general i believe it's um so in comparison let's like, say like uh, like college or like you know a uh, high school or secondary school it was like um more of like how you treat as an adult um i found that um because you know most of the students there are all like you know uh, i guess they'd be like in their 20s by then um it seems but more of a, um, a respectable rapport between student and and lecturer or teacher comparison where maybe it's a little bit stricter in secondary and college um i also found um things like uh there's a more diverse amount of people because universities like people come across around the world mm. they come to university and it was such a it was such a massive eye-opener of like you know uh the passion that people had in the same field as you had and you re and when you build around that enthusiasm and you know you're just literally just collaborating on like pretty much everything and you just you know, want to smash some cow and it's it's so <laughs> much fun and all that kind of uni it's it's yeah it was so much fun and similarly, what do you dislike most about uh, studying cost. at university, in addition <laughs> to what you've already said before? Um, I don't know. I, I, I didn't really, I don't believe I had any really many negatives or any negatives when I went to university. I think um, for me, it was always a positive experience wherever I went. Um, I suppose everything I could complain about would be the cost. But then again, that's, <laughs> yeah. uh, that's, uh, that's my... Well, that's, that's one my, aspect to complain yeah. about. Um, I, maybe like in a sense of like, um, because obviously academia and the technology sector is so quickly developing, it's the same kind of thing with psychology, like, um, new theories and new technologies always introduced mm. almost like every three to five years, effectively, like the old generation technology is almost like irrelevant of sorts. And then the lecturers are fighting to keep up. We're all keeping the fight up and 
the games industry just steaming off ahead without us kind of thing and it's uh yeah it's a uh, it's a bit of a battle but you know we, we slug through and we we make do but that's it really that's all i have okay and any advice that you've oh, accumulated boy. so far to potential students, especially those who will be starting their academic year this October? Okay, so I probably got a few, so I'll try and recall them what uh, my list and all that. But um, okay, so my first tip would be obviously focus on yourself. Um, don't try and compare yourself against other students. Um, a lot of the things that happen to other students, they compare themselves against other students who do really well. Uh, I mean, I had a few friends uh, that they they use Unity, for example, for like a year or two, and they were doing amazing things. And there was me just barely able to move a character around like my first like semester. And um, you have to understand a lot of people have different backgrounds to yourself. Don't don't compare yourself. Just focus on yourself uh, and you'll do just fine. Um, second tip for me, mm -hmm. <laughs> I just have to remember this myself is try not to go too overboard on your module. Um, you can still do really well, but I believe when you know enough is enough. So for example, you know, you've done a really good piece of work, try not to go overboard, try to make it like this just indie game that you're trying to do. Um, because I feel like, um, anything above 75%, I felt it's like a, the law of diminishing returns. Mm. So for example, I could get to 75% of a grade within 50 hours, but to get to about 85 and above would classify another 50 hours. And all that's going to do is, is punish, um, another module effectively. So yeah. manage, know when to stop. Um, so uh, my next big tip would be put the time in early. Don't leave everything to the final two weeks <laughs> definitely, <laughs> because it won't go well for you. Keep ahead. Um, don't be that student that never turns up and then decides, all right, I'm going to do everything now. Everything, <laughs> it never turns out well. And I was, I remember when I was my first year and I got everything done, I had probably like near enough 10 to 12 students like asking me for help on every daily basis. And I was like, I can't, I need to, do my own work and they would go off and yeah, they would be doing resets and all that. Just keep ahead, but also try and enjoy your time at the same, you know, at the same time. But, um, so last two things, uh, if it's perfect, fine. Sorry. Uh, okay. So if your work, your work doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be a AAA quality. We, you, you taught us this actually, Almas, in our first year. It was like expectations of like our games will <laughs> come in. Oh yeah, I'm gonna make the next Overwatch game, and and it's like no, 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 no. Throw that, throw that idea out the window. Um, you'll be lucky if you can basically make like um, like a 1980s Space Invaders game in your first year, effectively. And uh, yeah, understand that you're you're learning. You know, you're there to university to learn about game development. And it's it's not a marathon. Sorry, it's a marathon, not a sprint. Mm. So take it step by step. It doesn't matter how. Again, it goes back to my first point. You know, go with it. Um, and finally, network as much as possible, as early as possible. And then after three years, you've built this big connection, and uh, you won't be like left in stranded in the open with no connections. Because getting a great degree isn't all of it. It's three components: degree, experience, and networking. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty yeah, much that, that pretty much sums it up, actually, in terms of academia. Uh, but in terms of other aspects as well, so think finance, social life. Um, any advice there? Um, I think Is there a social life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you need to have a social life because even game devs they work hard, but they also like the person as the individual. So they don't want you just, um, you know, this person that isolates themselves for like days on end and doesn't want to talk to people because you kind of ostracize yourself. So show a little bit of a human side to these game devs so that if you feel you're right, you know, you're right person and, you, and you've got the right skill sets, they'll, they'll snatch you up. Um, but again, it's, um, yeah, learning when to step back from the work and chill out and relax is a, mm. just as important or you'll just burn yourself out. Yep. Uh, but how do you personally find the balance between um, coursework and exams, for example? It, for me, I, I'm a bit of a, I suppose a bit of an odd situation. I kind of like push hard when like the assessment briefings like unveiled are saying, this is what you're going to do. And I go, right, okay. I pretty much go flat out on it. And then towards the last month, I practically lift my foot off the gas. <laughs> and, uh, and I literally like to push myself over the line effectively. Um, so 
I try and get my work as quickly as done as possible and then try and then, you know, add more socializing in, in the last two months of the semester, effectively, in the last month and a half. That might not work for other people because other people working. I mean, I was quite like, mm, I, I had a full yeah. grant, so I didn't have to work. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess whatever works for other people. But for me personally, it was trying to get the work away as quick as possible, then relaxing when the good weather comes around because semester one's not so sunny, you know, <laughs> kind of thing. So, yeah. What's your preference though? Coursework or exams? Coursework for me, preference wise. I, I like getting on with the work and developing something and adding features to it over time. But I have got better at doing exams. Um, exams, it's more like if you're long as you're taking the notes and, you know, it's open book and you've got all the preparation material with you, you can't go wrong. Um, but for coursework, it's it, for me, it drags on longer. So I feel like I need to allocate more of my time into doing the coursework. Mm. And and if anything goes wrong, I have enough time to to fix that effectively. So I I selfishly prioritize coursework, probably about 70, 30 to exam. But then again, that's not for everyone. Yeah, sure. Uh, in terms of coursework projects then, what's your favorite programming language? Uh, well, I, I, I suppose I am always like the advocate of C++ because it's the from what I understand and what devs have told me, it's the primary language in mm. uh, in game programming. Okay, maybe not in mobile or web games and all that is fine. Um, yeah, for, for me, I, I learned a little bit of C-sharp for coming to uni. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, but I would say not learning the very basic fundamentals. Things, you know, like int strings, you know, doubles, blah, 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 the very basics. And then... I was trying to, um, while learning Java, I was trying to learn more C++ uh, styles of doing things so I could have some background before I, you know, before I left university. But um, that's the primary language I'm personally focusing on is C++ because it allocates with Unreal Engine, allocates with yeah. a lot of other game engines used in-house effectively. So, uh, yeah, for me, it's C++. And if someone is just about to start their programming career, what language would you recommend as a first language? Um, I suppose if you want to make games as somewhat as closely as possible to AAA, I would go C Sharp personally. Um, I think Unity is a very good engine to, to mm. learn about game development. And it's not so much about memory management. You have to worry about because the second you start using Unreal and it's like using pointers and all of that, mm -hmm. and you're like going, okay, I'm in for a world of hurt now. Um, I would personally, if if I could tell myself, I would, I would say learn C Sharp because it gives you enough room to work yeah. with stuff. It, it kind of similar to Java, but you also focus on using Unity with it, which is going to help you bridge the gap. You're not building a whole game engine from scratch. You can use unity quite quickly and um, there's a lot of source material out there so c sharp and unity together works really well especially if you're beginning mm -hmm. and what do you use your c plus plus for what kind of projects is there anything that you're working on outside uh, yeah. of the university <laughs> so now that university's finished i've got a bit more time on my hands i'm foolishly trying to make my own battle royale game using unreal and um you know c plus plus and maybe you can C. So I'm learning about network programming as well. Oh, uh, sounds really yeah. interesting. Yeah, I was able to, uh, I've been following a book and, uh, you know, step by step, you know, telling me about all the uh, things like sockets, like TCP and UDP. This is going to be something like Tetris 99. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. It's more like trying to like, maybe to like a, it's it's not like a hundred man battle royale. My, you know, I don't have a server or anything to run off. So I'm just like learning like the very basics of um, like multiplayer gaming, right. which I hopefully will maybe test one day, like become a battle royale, see if I can get like 50 people in on a private server, which I'll pay like a, I don't know, like a few hundred quid and then just like have it for a month and test it to put in my CV. But yeah, um, apart from that, I am intending, if I can't find work, in like let's say the next like four or five months, I'm going to try and maybe like start developing uh, one of my VR games, which mm. I won't I won't unveil on here because I'm I want to keep it secret now, which one I'm mm -hmm. developing on. But it's one of the ones I did at uni, and I'm, I reckon there's potential in it. But it's going to be something I want to develop over the next couple of years, you know, as a side project. But uh, that will involve, again, Unreal and C++, and it'll be a VR game. So, I mean, sounds great. Well, anything with VR sounds great. 
yeah yeah it's 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 different to like your typical like first person or third person there's a lot of Ooh. other things you'll consider and uh yeah it's it's good challenge but uh yeah i had a lot of fun of it okay so here's a an abstract ish question Ooh, for okay. you something that you learn at, at uni that you can't learn anywhere else oh boy okay so i think for me it would be uh, it'd probably like a bit of a cheesy response, but it was belief that I can do it, that I can do game dev. There was many years I went self-doubting. I'd say, well, I'm not smart enough. I can't do this. I can't do that. How can I ever achieve that? So uni kind of provided me the belief um, that I can do it. And yeah, my friends will probably laugh at the response on that because it is a bit cheesy, but it's true. I mean, I, I suppose I didn't have much confidence going into it. Uh, personally, I mean, now I'm booming of confidence, you know, I just want to find my first job and, uh, yeah, that's what uni really provided me. And, uh, in some, and also in some sense, leadership abilities. I mean, you know, we did the game jam society and all that, um, that kind of like helped me break out of my shell a little bit. I was a big mm. introvert. Um, and, but yeah, it kind of like maybe more into an extrovert, but, but it's more in, an introvert that's interesting collaborating with a lot yeah. of other introverts effectively. It's like, right, what kind of trouble can we get involved in? <laughs> and, uh, and just go from there really. And that's, yeah, that's what I feel is the university's taught me. It's been a bit more approachable and more, you know, involved in other stuff. Be more confident. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And just to wrap this discussion up. Uh, so you're graduated and what kind of companies you thinking to apply for? <laughs> well, long story short, probably as all of them, um, <laughs> because it is a very, very competitive industry. I have to be honest. There's a lot of hundreds of people applying for each job. Um, I may have to apply for, you know, positions that I won't be satisfied for a long term career aspiration wise. Mm. But I have to take it to get my foot in the door because a lot of junior positions require experience. How do you get experience? Yeah. You're just going to have to do something maybe that's um, like I'm already applying to QA analysis, you know, testers and all that. Uh, I'm applying for assistant producers. So it's pretty much at the bottom rung of the yeah. level. But I'm perfectly happy with that. So if I could be picky, I would like to come back to Brighton uh, because I've made a lot of uh, connections there. I've got a lot of friends there and uh I know a lot of people there, so if I can be picky, Brighton, but I'll take anywhere in the world. You know, I have to maybe even move a con to a different continent if that's what it takes. So I'll <laughs> do it. Just make sure you pay me enough to live there. Yeah. That's what I'm <laughs> Open for opportunities then. Yeah, yeah we'll make games for food. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's great stuff. Well, thank you for joining me today to talk about your experiences of studying at UK University. Um, and hopefully we can do some stuff together, maybe collaborate. Yeah, and definitely. Talk about other things. I mean, you've done quite a bit of stuff. Um, yeah. <laughs> so you can talk about. I've been around. <laughs> yeah. You can talk about a lot of interesting stuff, including VR as well. Uh, so we'll see what the audience thinks and then um, we'll continue. Yeah, thank you very much, um, Alex. Yep, cool stuff. And thank you guys for watching this video. And I'll see you in the next one.